Hello, welcome to Fundamental of Acoustics. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is a 12 week course. Uh, this is the first week of this particular course and specifically this is the fourth day in the first week. What we will be discussing today is uh, the decibel scale. In the last lecture, I had explained that the range of pressure for uh, while we are doing measurements on sound pressure level can be very large. It can be as low as 20 micropascals at one end and it can be on the higher end as high as few hundred pascals. So, the range is extremely large and because it is practically difficult to depict uh, this entire range uh, on a single piece of paper effectively if we had to use a linear scale, we resort to the decibel or a logarithmic scale. And in this particular case in context of sound that particular logarithmic scale is known as the decibel scale. So, what this chart once again shows is that at the low end the pressures could be as low as 20 micro Pascals and we may be interested in also measuring pressures as high as a few hundred Pascals. So, it is an extremely large pressure range. Let us look at powers. Okay. So, in the last lecture we had also discussed that we can measure sound in three ways. We can measure the pressure it generates at the receiver end which is near the microphone or uh, near the ear or we can measure it in terms of power that is the acoustical power generated by the sound source which could be a loudspeaker or an engine or a human voice or an animal or an aircraft or whatever or it could be in the third case it could be intensity that it is uh, watts per square meter. So, once again if there is a sound source which is barely vis uh, audible which is barely audible and it is let us say producing frequency is somewhere close to 1000 hertz and the sound source is about 28 meter 28 centimeters away then it will have to produce power as low as 10 to the power of minus 12 watts. So, that it is barely or it is just audible. So, that is the minimum amount of power our ears can sense when the sound source is 28 centimeters away. If we bring that uh, or we take that sound source further down or further away and we put it maybe about 2.8 meters away then the power it has to generate so that it is just audible is 10 to the power of minus 12 watts. This is at the low end of the power scale and then when we are talking it is about 10 to the power of minus 5 watts, loud speech is about few milliwatts and then for a turbojet engine it is as high as 10,000 watts. So, once again we see that range of power is also extremely large. So, at one end it is 10 to the power of 4 watts in this case and at the low end it is 10 to the power of minus 12 watts. So, the range is something close to 10 to the power of 16. Once again this entire range cannot be depicted on a linear scale. So, we once again see that in case of pressures the range is very large, in case of wattages the range is very large and in the case of intensities also the range is very large. So, we have to have a log scale to depict sound pressure levels. As I mentioned that there are three ways to measure sound either in terms of power or intensity or pressures. So, accordingly we have three on the decibel scale we can measure either the sound power level that is S P L or the sound intensity level that is L i the sound power level is L w 
or the sound pressure level which is LP. So, these are more or less industry standards LW, LI and LP. Now, let us look at how they are defined. And so, this is a log scale on which these power uh, intensities and pressures are defined. So, decibel in L for LW is defined through this formula is equal to 10 log of 10 W over W ref. So, I will explain that. So, suppose there is a device producing W watts of power and I have to compute how much decibels of sound it is generating. Then I can compute those decibel value, that decibel value by using this relation where W is the power of the sound producing device. W ref is the RMS power level uh, of a reference device which in this case is 10 to the power of minus 12 watts. Uh, once again W is the amount of power or acoustical power that is its RMS value. So, that is W. W ref is the reference value and if I take the log of it on a uh, 10 uh, uh, you know on a, on a log 10 scale and multiply it by 10 I get decibels. Similarly, if I have to compute sound intensity then sound intensity level L i equals 10 log 10 i divided by reference intensity and the reference intensity is again 10 to the power of minus 10. 12 watts per square meter. Please note that in both these relations W and I are the RMS values of power and intensity respectively. Similarly, if I have to compute sound pressure level LP, then LP is defined as 10 log 10, but instead of having the ratio of P and P ref, we take the squares of the ratio. So, it is P square where P corresponds to the pressure generated by the device and P square ref where P ref is the RMS uh, is the reference pressure which is 20 micro Pascals. Okay. So, if I take the two out in this relation then LP equals 20 log 10. P divided by P ref, where P is once again the RMS value of the pressure. So, now we will spend a few minutes on understanding how do we go around computing the RMS value of pressure or RMS value of wattage or whatever. So, before we start doing that, please understand that how is sound being recorded. So, you have a microphone, sound is coming and hitting it and the, <coughs> the microphone is sensing that pressure and it is recording that data. So, essentially what we get from a microphone is a graph like this. So, on the x axis we have time and on the y axis we have pressure as a variation of or as a function of time. So, this pressure could be some graph like this. Okay. So, if I have to compute how many decibels we uh, this pressure corresponds to then we have to use this relation decibel equals 20 log of 10 p and then this p is the RMS value. divided by P ref and P ref equals 20 into 10 to the power of minus 5 Pascals. So, when we are recording pressure we have to first thing we have to make sure is that this is in Pascals. If it is giving you if your microphone is giving you in voltages then you have to somehow convert that voltage using the calibration factor of a microphone into Pascals because the decibels for computing decibels 
we have to record pressure and the unit of pressure is Pascals. And then the other thing is that we have to compute its RMS value. So, how do we do that? The first thing we do it is that we identify several points on the graph. So, So, that is what we do. We discretize this graph into several points and typically and we will discuss this also later in detail in this course. This is done by an analog to digital converter. So, analog signal is continuous in time the digital converter breaks it up into small discrete points. So, let us say this point is P1, P2, P3 and let us say this is Pn. So, P1, Pn are n points n points uh, n points on our axis. Okay. So, what is RMS? So, RMS it corresponds to root mean square value. Root mean square and how do we compute the root mean square of these n data points? So, the first thing we do is we take the square, then we go in this direction, then we take the mean and then we take the square root. This is how we do it. So, RMS P RMS is what? First we take all the squares of individual pressures. So, it is P 1 square plus P 2 square plus P 3 square P n square. So, we have done the squaring and we have added these up and then we take their mean. So, there are n points. So, we take the squares, add them up and divide them by n. So, we have taken the mean and finally, we take the square root. We take the square root and that is how we get the RMS value. Okay. So, once we calculate the RMS value, we can calculate the decibels and the decibel is computed as 20 log of 10 for P RMS by P ref. Now, this is for L P. Similarly, if we were interested in calculating the sound power level, we will record the value of power as a function of time and then calculate the RMS, but in this case instead of multiplying by 20, we will just multiply it by 10. Okay? And likewise, we can also compute the pressure intensity decibel in a similar way. But it is important to understand that in this relation, in this relation or in this relation, it is the RMS we are interested in. Now, having said that, <coughs> another question will be how long, how many points should I include? So, that is what is the range of this time? Should I record my data for half a second? Should I record it for one second, should I record it for 1 millisecond, should I record it for 20 seconds and because based on how many data points we have, the RMS may change. Okay? If I recorded only this much portion of data, then the RMS would have been larger. If I record for a little longer time, at least in this case, then the RMS would come down. So, how long should I record so that I get a good value of PRMS? 
And so the answer to that question is that it depends. <coughs> if your data is repeatable, if it is or in mathematically lot of times people call it stationary. So, suppose you have a tire which is rolling on the road. If you record it, you have to make an assessment that how long should you take the data for so that the data is somewhat repeatable. Once it is repeatable, then you do not have to record it for a longer period of time. So, that is one part of the answer that it depends and it is based on your understanding that how the you have to get a feel of how long you have to do the recording so that the data becomes repeatable. The second part of the answer is that it also depends on <coughs> what kind of a frequency resolution you need. So, if you take data for a large number of uh, longer period of time, then later and we will discuss this later in this course, some where, somewhere close to the end of this course when we talk about FFT. If you take a longer time period, then when you convert this time domain data into frequency domain data, you get a finer resolution on frequency. So, it depends on that parameter as well. But in either of those cases, you have to compute the RMS value. So, that is important to understand. So, we have seen that there are three important on the decibel scales, there are three important uh, sound levels, power level LW, intensity level LI and pressure level LP and these are the definitions. So, these are the most popular definitions of uh, decibels, but there are several other decibel scales also. So, you should understand that that sound it is not only that the decibel scale is only used for um, sound, it can also be used for acceleration, velocity, force, energy density and energy. Now, these may, may or may not be related to sound, but in literature when you do you will find that decibel is used in several contexts. So, when you use this uh, term decibel you have to be careful. And then in context of noise and sound also, there are a very large number of uh, L's or uh, sound levels and a lot of these levels are based on how long you take the duration uh, that overall time period. But regardless uh, of uh, the uh, you know the multiplicity of these scales, the most important scales at least in context of this course are LW, LI and LP which you have to understand and internalize because uh, this is what we will be using very frequently in this course. So, this concludes my fourth lecture for this week and uh, tomorrow we will further continue this discussion. Have a great day and see you tomorrow. Bye.